Hey guys, it's Tamara coming back at you with another video. Welcome back to my channel. Let's start our new topic. We're going to be starting with a topic that a lot of my clients tend to struggle with. And I must say that I struggle with this as well. Um, but it is thought patterns and thinking patterns and um, negative self-talk and cognitive distortions and worrying. So we're going to talk a lot about that this week. Um, I'm actually going to make this a three-part series as well. So you're going to get a video from me on Monday, on Wednesday, and on Friday. So it is your lucky day because we're going to be talking about ways to adjust and alter your thinking. And I'm going to talk today about cognitive distortions or thought patterns. So first, let's talk about the benefits for you. I think the benefits to this video for you is that you're going to be able to learn a little bit more about what you do. I'm going to try to expand some typical um, or common concepts that I usually discuss with my clients um, <clears throat> and probably some concepts that you've heard of before. So I have my, my notes here to kind of keep me on track. Um, I also think a second benefit to this is you're probably going to learn about two or three new concepts in regards to thought patterns. So um, I'm going to try to be as practical as I can and not uh, go crazy with the psychobabble. So um, let me define what cognitive distortions are. So I'm going to go ahead and put a description over here, which is cognitive distortions. But then I'm going to also put a description over here of negative self-talk, okay? Because we're going to be focusing on these two things, okay? So first, I'm going to go down and down a listing of typical negative thought patterns that you might experience on a daily basis. And then what I'm going to do is give you some examples of what those things look like. All right. So the first thing that I see a lot of my clients struggle with is something called polarized thinking. Okay. Polarized thinking. Another way to look at this would be black and white thinking. Okay. And so it depends on what age group I'm working with. If I'm working with an adolescent or an adult, I typically use polarized thinking. If I'm working with a child um, or you know maybe an immature adolescent, I tend to go with black and white thinking. The whole process here, the whole idea of all of this um, is when you are engaging in polarized or black and white thinking, you're not looking at the possibilities, right? You're looking at yes or no, right? You're looking at black and white. There's never any... Um, consideration of the gray, right? And and the way I explain this to kids is the gray area of things typically feels like doubt, or it's typically that area where you're like, hmm, maybe, maybe there's something to this, or maybe not, right? So it's like that area of things that you question or that you're uncertain about. Um, I also explain it to adolescents in this way, that black and white thinking is very rigid and, and gray thinking is that middle balanced place that you want to stay when you're working with um, challenges in your life, relationships, right? Nothing is ever typically either uh, black or white, right? Um, sometimes, or for the most part, I should say, uh, life comes at us with a lot of gray matter, right? There's a lot of gray in the middle, and we need to figure out um, how to make most decisions based on that gray and not the black and white polarized view of things, okay? So black and white polarized thinking. The next one is disqualifying the, disqualifying the positive. I have a client that does this, and uh, she and I have been working on this for about over a year now, and it's trying to um, get her to see life in more of a balanced way, being able to accept the negative things that happen and being able to also accept the positive things that are happening. So when you disqualify the positive, basically what you're doing, and I'm sure you're well aware of this, you've probably done it, I've done it, um, when you disqualify the positive, you almost come across as pessimistic. It's like, you know, there's nothing good or positive that's going to happen here. So I might as well just be negative about it all. Some people say I'm being balanced. Other people say, nope, you're just straight up pessimistic, right? So disqualifying the positive is another thought distortion, right? The reason I call it a thought distortion is because there might actually be something positive happening in the moment. And as a result of fear of loss or uncertainty or, you know, anger, whatever the emotion may be, because of that, the person disqualifies the positive. They do not want to look at the fact that there is positive things involved because they're so afraid of the negative. So 
uh, disqualifying the positive can can actually lead to depression because you never allow yourself to see the good in anything. And we're going to talk in our second video of this three-part series, we're going to talk a little bit about how to do that, how to get rid of the polarized thinking and some of the other thought distortions that I'm going to be talking about. All right, so the next one is magnification and minim minimization. That's a tongue twister, magnification and minimization. Okay, so let's start with magnif magnification. Magnification? Yeah, it just sounds weird. Um, so magnification is basically the idea that you take a situation and because of your emotions or because of your thought patterns, you end up stretching it and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And sometimes it gets so big that you find it really hard to get over it. Okay, and I say this a lot with individuals who have borderline personality disorder. They take one little small thing, right? They, they start to contort it or it becomes skewed and then it gets bigger. And it's like, oh my God, how did that happen, right? So I'm gonna give you an example of this because I think this is quite uh, significant to, to kind of stay on for a second here. So somebody with borderline personality disorder often has a difficult time managing not only their emotions and their impulses, but also relationships, okay? And somebody with BPD who engages in, in magnification might uh, take a small statement made to them and ruminate over it. I'm gonna put that description right over here. Ruminate over and over and over and over and over, right? To a point to where they start to then develop emotions about their thoughts. It also begins to become a part of their reality. And then before you know anything, that false reality, because it, it you know this is what they've developed after going over and over and over it in their mind, um, once that happens, they ruminate, okay, they start to contort it or, or skew the perspective and then boom, it just starts growing and growing and growing and most individuals with BPD um, can't tolerate it. So then they end up exploding because, you know, they've made this thing, this, this small thing, this big thing in their world. So this is a typical pattern with people uh, with BPD, all right, minimization. This is a typical pattern with people who are narcissistic. Okay, so an example of this might be uh, you might, I'm going to say you for example, so I'm going to play with you just a little bit in this one. So let's just say you are in a relationship with a person um, who is highly successful, okay? She's everything you've ever wanted. The, the problem is that um, she's very narcissistic and very selfish and very self-centered. Because of that, um, it's really hard to communicate in a relationship with her. So you decide, okay, uh, I think I'm gonna have to talk to her about this way of being because I'm not comfortable with her being so narcissistic. I'm not comfortable with the things she says or does or thinks, right? So you go to have a conversation with her. You guys are you know, hitting off pretty well. Everybody seems okay, there's no tension. You sit down and you've been stressing about this conversation because you don't want it to break you up as a couple. You don't want it to end up in, in, in you know, um, rubble. <laughs> you don't want anything to explode. You just wanna get your feelings out and your thoughts. Okay, you finally bring it up. And what does the narcissistic person do? Oh, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, you're just imagining things, you know, just get over it. Everything will be all right, right? Uh, or they might say something like, ha, you mean to tell me that bothered you? Oh my God, why would you let that bother you, right? Minimization. They take that very thing that, you know, you saw as really huge and really big and they just bring it down to this little, small, little, you know, peeny weeny thing. And it makes you feel inadequate. It makes you feel like you've engaged in magnification, right? Um, in terms of your own thinking, minimization is when you don't look at the reality of things and you minimize it, right? My child is not mentally ill. My child is rebellious. Or my, my, my son is not um, uh, someone with autism. He plays this way to get attention right so we have to be careful how we minimize things because while we're minimizing it the situation is getting bigger and bigger and we're failing to accept reality because of that okay the next one is emotional reasoning and women are very very guilty of this 
I myself am guilty of this. I cannot say emotional reasoning without feeling a twinge of guilt in my own heart because here's what happens. You feel a certain way and because you feel a certain way for that day, that moment, that time, you know, that situation, you begin to paint everything based on that emotion. So let's say I'm having a really bad day, which I've had before many times. And I've had a really bad day because I'm tired and there's stuff going on in my family and my, you know, two or three of my clients that I really care about are struggling and I just, I can't, I can't deal with it, right? All right, so, so, okay, so now I'm starting to feel helpless. I'm starting to doubt myself. I'm starting to wonder if I'm really helping. I'm starting to fear. I'm starting to feel overwhelmed and exhausted. So what do I do? I start to think that, oh my God, my client dislikes me or, oh my God, I'm ruining their life, right? So based on my emotions in that moment or in that situation or for that day, I end up painting everything according to my emotions. And unfortunately, that often ends up not so good because then I wake up the next day and I feel foolish because I totally magnified everything. And then I start thinking, yeah, but well, maybe it's true. And then I go back to that pattern again and I'm ruminating. So um, I'm hoping that in the next video, I can talk to you about ways to get through this because I found a few secrets just for myself in the past as to how to deal with this pattern because it's something we do um, as women. I do have to say men do too, but women a whole lot more. The next one is something you've probably never heard of and it's called a control fallacy. And I'm gonna put that over here because it's a new one. Control fallacy is basically basically the idea that you either have control over your life or you absolutely don't have control, okay? And so the whole idea of a control fallacy is that you begin to either see your world as completely out of control and you have no footprints or fingerprints in your life whatsoever. Everything is taking control of you. You're not taking control of it. Or you have this control fallacy that I'm in control of everything. Everything is out of line. Everything is chaotic. Everything is falling apart. But you're like, I got this, you know. So a control fallacy can really go against you because either you get arrogant and really huge in your ego and your pride and you think, you know what, I got this all under control. I think I'm going to be all right. Or you sit there and you say, mm -mm, I don't have this under control. I'm scared to death, you know. Either way, you flip it, it can be bad because you're holding on to a false reality. All right, so here's the next one. And this one is also interesting. I'm going to put that right over here because this is called a fallacy of change, a fallacy of change. And the whole idea of a fallacy of change is that you believe that if you force someone to change, they will change. I just need to give him a push and he'll change. Or I just need to get him around the right people and he'll change. Or I just need to get her in my life and I can change her, right? You'll see this a lot in romantic relationships where the person says, okay, he's drinking, but he'll stop when he gets with me. Not necessarily. He might stop starting out because he wants to impress you and he's at his best. But then once he gets comfortable with you, watch out. He's going right back to that alcohol. Uh, a control of, I'm sorry, a fallacy of change. I'm going back to the last one. A fallacy of change can also be in addiction cases. So if I get my family member in an addiction program or rehab, I can change him or her, right? So you want to watch the fallacy of change because what it does is it gives you a false sense of power. You don't have that power to change anybody. So um, you want to be watchful when you are experiencing any of the thought patterns that I just spoke about. All right, so let me just define before we end what a cognitive distortion is or a thought distortion. A cognitive distortion or a thought distortion is this. Um, you are allowing, because of your emotions or because of you know your depression, anxiety, or whatever you're going through, you allow your mind to run amok. You allow your mind to tell you things that isn't true. You allow your mind to run a gamut on you, right? Your mind is completely manipulating you, right? And I've done it so many times. I'm like, why do I let this happen to myself? Like, come on, um, I'm a therapist here. I should get this under control. 
Um, and so you, you kind of allow your mind to tell you things about yourself that's not true. And then you allow your emotions to complete the process. Um, so that's the way I want you to see that, okay? Um, cognitive distortions or thought distortions should not be seen as I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I need to change my thoughts. Cognitive distortions and thought distortions should be uh, perceived as, okay, I'm letting my mind manipulate me and now my emotions are finishing me off and I need to figure out how to look for the balance. How do I balance myself so that I don't fall into this trap every single time? And we're going to talk about that more in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Thanks so much, guys, for being with me today. I'm always glad to have you with me. You guys are awesome. Thank you for the emails and the tweets and the texts. I'm always appreciative to get your feedback, your wonderful words of encouragement. Thank you. Glad that you love the videos. I'm going to keep them going. As long as you guys want to keep seeing them, I'm going to keep them going. I think they're helpful. I encourage you to give this video a thumbs up. One of the reasons I ask every end of the video is because when you give a thumbs up, you're actually helping to push the video up in the top of the search results in YouTube and on Google. So then that way other people will have access to this information. So look at it as giving back, not just to me, but also giving back to other people who may need this information. Also, feel free to subscribe. The subscribe button is right here on the side. Um, I encourage you to subscribe because then that way every time I post a video, it's going to be ready for you. Um, and you're going to have it right there in your YouTube, just waiting on you to click the button. So you want to stay tuned because I'm going to be doing a lot of series over the summer. Um, I think the series are helpful because you get parts one, two, and three, and you, you get to lump concepts together. I think it's a good way to learn. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Thanks once again, and I will see you really, really soon. Bye, guys. See you soon.